right, so being in Florida, um, we've had a lot of revivals, you know? You know, the Brownsville revival, and then there was like that thing that happened over at Ignited, and then it went over to the stadium, and we had so many traffic jams because people from all over were legitimately piling into Lakeland with traffic lights that are already too long enough as it is, and so we're like, what is going on? You know, all these people that are just flocking to these main events that are just where, where God's spirit is moving and doing new things. And this is the truth and the reality is that people are attracted and drawn to these big signs, these big wonders. There's just something about, man, when you see someone get healed, it's powerful. It's amazing. And, and you can't help but just be like, it's almost like a drug where you're just like, i got to see more of what God's going to do, of what he can do, of possibilities that I didn't even think were reality, are actually becoming reality. And, and I think sometimes that, man, but we can get so attracted and so drawn to the things that God can do that sometimes we don't even stop to think about the substance behind it. And so Jesus quickly addresses this in John chapter 6, um, verses 26 through 27. He says, Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. On him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Little backdrop from the background for the text is um, Jesus has legitimately just fed 5,000 people, and that's probably only including the men. That isn't including the women, the children. And this isn't just like, oh, I got my bread, I got my fish. Like, they were stuffed. And maybe you don't even realize the, the importance of this. Is You know, if you think back in biblical days, you're a tradesman, you're working hard, you're doing your work, you show up, and whatever's put on the table is a blessing. It's, it's never like, you know, how Thanksgiving rolls around and like we're like passed out comatose on the couch watching football because we like stuffed ourselves so full. But this is the first time that they've experienced something where they're not just, they're not just complacent, but they're fully satisfied. Where they're not just, oh man, I, they're not even thinking about, man, I wonder what I'm going to eat tomorrow because in the moment they're just so full of what God has performed. And so Jesus says this, you know, he just walks across the water the next day, no big deal. You know, just to the other side, and the people wake up, and they're like, where'd Jesus go? Where'd he go? And, and, they, and they go, and they track him down all over to Capernaum, and they jump in their boats, and they row across. They probably get a really good workout for that. And, and they get over there, and they, and they say, Jesus, hey, we're here. And he's like, he's, you know what? Why are you following me? Why do we follow Christ? Do we follow because of the things that he's done for our lives? Do we follow him because he has delivered us? He has given us signs and wonders in our own lives where even if you're not sure, or even if you're not aware, God has done miracles in your life that you're not even aware of. Or do we follow him because when all is said and done, we're satisfied? I think we have this innate desire to be fulfilled, to feel satisfied. And, and for us, I think sometimes we can look to things, or we can look to trends, and we can look to popularity and things and say, man, I just want to feel accepted. I just want to feel that I'm not lacking anything. And we can go pursuing things to the right and things to the left. And Jesus says, no, don't pursue me for the things that I can do for you, but pursue me for who I am and what I can do in your life. And for not the, just the things, but because... Anywhere else you go, you won't find the satisfaction that he can bring. I think it's funny that, um, man, Jesus says, I will provide. I will be the one that provides. And it is not something that's temporary. It's not something that's superficial, but it's eternal. I mean, there's people all around us that, that need that eternal salvation, that eternal substance to say, man, I love you just for who you are, not for what I can do. Not so that we can manipulate God and barter with him, but to be God, you are truly everything that I desire. And so this is just a, I just want to encourage you. Um, look back, reflect on your life. Remember, yes, what God has done for you, because that's powerful in and of itself. 
But look back and say, God, who are you revealing to be in my life? What is this that you have revealed in my life that is so substantial that I can give it away to other people? Because that's the truth and the reality is, is, man, God provides so that we can give out. So that we can give a world that is desperately looking to be fulfilled exactly what it needs. Not popularity, not trend, not fame, not human acceptance, but a God who truly sees them exactly where they are in their darkest moment and loves them and wants to fulfill them. There's no greater fulfillment than being in the presence and in, in the power of Christ, knowing that that's exactly where we were made to be. So I just encourage you, be bold, don't be fearful. And also, you know, step back and realize in your own life, man, what are areas that I need to surrender um, that, that God needs to, to take over? Father God, I thank you so much um, for who you are. Pray that you would just bless us and, and speak to our hearts, God, and reveal who you are. Lord, not for the things that you do, but, but because of the substance and identity that we find in you. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, any comments? Anybody? You first? Nothing? I thought it was good uh, preparation. Yeah. If, Eliz if Liz and Hannah were to like co-preach, it would be like the most energetic, passionate yeah. Yeah. and no one would have an excuse to like fall asleep. Yeah. Um, great job. Watch your time. Yeah. You were over. But um, other than that, there was something very, very valuable that she did. And who